Hello, and thank you for joining us today for today's video. Uh, my name is Tim Barodi, and I am an associate advisor with Advice First Financial Group. And I'm excited to be joined today by Wayne Havis, partner at Clark Stark and Jigal. Uh, thank you, Wayne, for taking the time to chat today. Well, thank you for inviting me, Tim. So uh, we know 2020 was an unprecedented year, um, the lots of changes throughout all aspects of life. But as we're now approaching tax filing season for that um, tumultuous year that 2020 was, um, I wanted to take some time to chat with you today about some of the issues people should be aware of or some of the questions that we've been getting. Um, as part of our life-centered planning approach, tax planning is a big portion of that. And so we want to make sure that people are getting uh, good information and good advice. So um, I'm just going to jump right into it here. And um, the first aspect that impacted probably the most people was the SERB payments. Um, so tell us a little bit about kind of the impact of that, the tax treatment, and what people should be aware of um, as we get ready for filing. Right, right. And, uh, and there was a number of payments, and they all went under different uh, acronyms, SERB, there was the sickness benefits, there was uh, students got some benefits, there's caregiver benefits, but um, they're all going to be taxable. So I think the first thing to do for this year will be to look out for a, a T4A that will likely arrive in the mail for you. And that uh, will spell out a couple of things. So uh, tell you what is the taxable amount, the amount they consider to be taxable for you. And uh, also if there was any tax withheld, I understand on the CRV payments, there is 10% withheld on CRV. So you also get credit for that. Um, so that's the first thing is to make sure you, you get that T4A and, and check that number because uh, um, if you're uh, one of those who had to repay any benefits during the year, that taxable amount should be uh, the net of that repayment. So you want to just check that number uh, just to be satisfied that you're going to get taxed on the right amount. But, but anyways, you enter that into your tax return. Uh, now, all, the, all those items I mentioned will be taxable this year, but for those who received the extra OAS payment, GIS, GST payment, those aren't taxable, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but uh, you enter the, those, uh, those other items off your T4A into your tax return. And, uh, and so uh, you may well end up paying tax. It kind of depends on your own situation, whether you have other income or not, what other deductions or credits that you get. So uh, it's quite possible you might have to pay tax. Uh, and for those who uh, receive the CRB, uh, you may have to repay some of that. So say you have other income uh, excluding CRB, but if you have other income, whether it's employment income, uh, SERB payments, that sort of thing, if that adds up to 38000 and then you receive CRB on top of that, you're going to have to repay half of your CRB payment. So you'll just have, for those who receive CRB, um, you know, that, uh, that may be part of your tax return for this year as well. And that's, that's good to know. And that does provide also some planning opportunities with maybe RSP contributions or that sort of thing to help offset some of that um, additional income that people might be showing that they weren't expecting to be showing um, at the beginning of 2020. So the, the other big impact was a lot of people ended up working from home in 2020, or um, if not for most of the year, at least for parts of the year. So um, what kind of deductions or credits are available to people that um, went to a work from home environment versus going into the office? Yeah, it's, you're right. It's a hot topic. Uh, issue. We've got lots of questions about it. And usually when somebody's working from home, they're incurring uh, uh, extra costs, which is include having your own office in the house. That's part of your workspace. You may be paying for supplies. You may be paying for uh, cell phone usage. Um, uh, and internet connection at home. And so, uh, you know, the uh, deductions as an employee are available to you where you work from home. And, uh, and so they've eased up on the rules this year. They recognize that it's going to affect a lot of people and uh, why not make it a little simpler? And so they, they've done that. And, uh, and so they've offered a couple of options on, on how to do that. One is uh, being a flat rate amount and you may well have heard that it's going to be two dollars a day uh, to maximum four hundred dollars and so um that's that's uh you know um gonna make life simpler for people in a lot of ways because there's the, the other way to do it is what they call the detailed method 
and that involves a lot of bookkeeping. <laughs> you know, you've got to uh, track all your expenses, work out the space, and that sort of thing. But those are the two uh, kind of main concessions or uh, approaches they've taken to uh, people working from home this year. Now, if people use the detailed method, is there a cap on the expenses in that scenario versus, like you said, the fixed rate method is just a max of $400. Is there a maximum on the detailed method? No, no, there's no maximum uh, there. But uh, again, it's uh, there's going to be cases where you, know, you kind of work out all the numbers and the $400 flat rate is going to work out better for you. So um, um, just a couple of things to keep in mind uh, uh, whether you're using the flat rate method or the detailed method, you've got to qualify, you know, to to claim this. And so uh, there's got to be at least a four week period, consecutive weeks where you work from home at least half the time. So that's the uh, that's the main criteria. So, uh, but again, that's going to apply to a lot of people uh, this year. So you've got to make sure you um, you qualify that way. Um, and secondly, if you want to use the flat rate or the easy approach. Uh, you can't be claiming other employment expenses. And so they've, uh, if you get into, uh, say, you've got some home office supplies to claim or you've got some phone expenses to claim or you claim a car and that sort of thing, you can't use the flat rate method. So it's as nice and simple as that is, if your situation is a bit more involved, you, you have to go with the, the detailed method. Uh, but once you're into the detailed method, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, the, Calculations involved, as I mentioned, you have to add up all the expenses, you know, but uh, when it comes to employee, you can't claim all the home office ex or home expenses and what it costs to run your house. They, they narrowed down the list and it and really it just it covers things like rent, utilities, uh, Internet uh, access. Um, and that's a pretty short list. And so uh, it doesn't include things like mortgage interest. Um, it doesn't include property taxes or insurance unless you're a commission employee. And so, uh, let's say, assume you're not, you're just a regular employee, you've got a fairly short list. Uh, and then you have to look at uh, what space you've used in the house as a home office. And so there you're getting into, you have to calculate the ratio of your home office space versus the living area in your house. So you're applying uh, kind of a short list of expenses times a ratio of what the size of the office is in the house. and so. Uh, you can come down to kind of a small number. And so I guess our experience with it, and we haven't seen a lot of it so far this year, but our look at it is that, you know, the flat rate method will work for most people unless uh, you're doing things like renting uh, because uh, renters have higher costs than homeowners because homeowners, you can't count in, in mortgage interest, property tax insurance. Right. So renters have a bit higher expense. Uh, you may also, uh, if you're a commission employee, your list of expenses are a bit higher. Uh, that also helps. And if you've uh, worked from home almost all year, like if you have like 200 days of working from home, that's when you may well get into higher numbers on the detailed method. So lots to think about, but uh, you know, I think it's, it's good that CRA has made things easier with that flat rate method. All you have to do is track the number of days. And as long as you qualify that you work from home for those four weeks, half the time, uh, then whatever happened the rest of the year, you can claim those days or part days even and up to the maximum of $400. So I think it'll make life easier for people to prepare the returns, you know, but, um, so which is, I think, is a good thing. Perfect. So um, I know in, in 2019 tax season, so in 2020, there were a lot of concessions made for payments when when payments were due or when amounts owing were due. Um, have you heard anything about any changes like that again this year or, or anything that's expected at this point? No, I, I, I guess personally, I think we received all the concessions we were going to get last year. You know, I think they were pretty generous in extending the deadlines for both filing and paying, but uh, certainly I haven't heard anything this year that they're going to change. So I think, you know, for the most part, April 30th will be the a hard deadline unless, unless, you know, things happen and, and other uh, announcements are made, but so far we haven't heard anything. All right. And I guess finally, is there anything else kind of that, that as a result of 2020 that people should be aware of or looking for as we're, heading into tax season now and people are starting to put together documents and that sort of thing? Uh, no, I, I think uh, the CRA has been 
good uh, that way this year. They haven't introduced a lot of new rules, and so I think the most for the most part, uh, you know, I think you can approach this year very much like last year, except for the items we talked about. If you've received these uh, these serve payments or other uh, support payments or the work from home options, but other than that, I, I don't expect a lot of change from from last year. Perfect. Well, I mean, that's that's a lot of great information there. Again, we've been getting a lot of questions just like you have on, on some of these topics. So, um, again, our goal through our life-centered planning approach here at Advice First is really to provide clarity and uh, try to simplify things for people. And uh, hopefully uh, today we've been able to do that a little bit for you. Um, so, Wayne, thank you again for taking the time today to to chat with us. And um, if you have any questions or if you need um, a little bit more explanation, um, you can contact um, either us or Wayne directly. And um, our contact information is up on the screen there now. Touch base and get a hold of us that way. So again, Wayne, thank you for your time. And everybody uh, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day.